Hello, everyone, and welcome to Ring Respect Radio, an exclusive interview here. I am here with Phil Deadly, PPW's very own. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing pretty good, man. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you very much for doing the show. Very glad to have you here. Uh, unfortunately, Bob Smokes couldn't make it to join the fun here tonight, as he usually would. But, you know, it's uh, great to be able to sit down, have a one-on-one with you. Uh, we've gotten to know each other uh, a little bit over the years, working together uh, behind the scenes of uh, both Prairie Pro Wrestling and High Impact Wrestling as well. But I thought I'd take this opportunity to sit down and just get to know you a little bit better and let everyone else get to know uh, Phil Deadly, you had to know where your whole story started. So just kind of wondering, uh, where did the Phil Deadly story start? Where were you born, raised, uh, and when did you first become interested in pro wrestling? Well, uh, I was born here in Saskatoon. Um, like pretty much once my parents came to Canada, I was born, I'd say not too long after, maybe two or three years after. And as for when I started watching wrestling, I have no idea. I just always remember watching, like watching, it was always on. Um, my clearest memory is like, I remember uh, my first VHS I bought was uh, I think the 1992 Royal Rumble, where it was uh, uh, Ultimate Warrior versus, I believe, Sergeant Slaughter. Uh, and Warrior had a the championship going in and Macho Man, I remember coming in and costing the Warrior the the match. Therefore, Slaughter getting uh, the big win. Oh man, um, yeah, I think that was, I think that was the first. I think the first wrestling pay per view match that I've seen that I, I actually like remember. Like, uh, but like I, I don't know when exactly I started watching it. Yeah, just one of those things that was always on. Yeah, it was, it was always on. And I remember one time my dad told me a story that uh, he asked me if I wanted to go to the SAS Tell Center uh, to watch. I guess they were, cut, they were in town, and it was when uh, Bret Hart was going against Ric Flair to win his nice. first world title. Yeah. And he asked me, do you want to do do go? And I'm like, oh, is Ultimate Warrior going to be there? He's like, oh, I don't <laughs> think so. No, I'm good, Dan. And then oh, now, no. uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember being at that show myself too. So you yeah, definitely like, missed uh, out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I was a huge, uh, like Ultimate Warrior fan. Like I think he was probably the person that got me into into wrestling. Just like the whole, like. Yeah, like the everything, like the look, like the long hair, like the cool tassels. That that guitar entrance, I'm like, oh, good god, man! Like, you know, you know, it's <laughs> like a rock star. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And so, yeah, uh, I think he was the first wrestler that I gravi- gravitated towards to growing up. And then, like, you know, as I got, you know, older, you know, like, uh, like the Shawn Michaels, like the Bret Hart, uh, all that stuff. Um, yeah. So I I watched wrestling pretty much all through my childhood uh and then in high school i looked up uh wrestling schools like on dirt sheets and uh and like you know at that time being 16 in saskatoon and saskatchewan in like the early 2000s you're seeing all these schools like listed like um, uh like the malenkos had had a school uh mr perfect had a school uh, like the dungeon even though that was in calgary to me that was like pfft, a million miles like away from a 16 year old you know yeah and so like as i went through high school i still watched it and then i was like uh i think i towards my senior year i found a local promotion in the city here uh pro outlaw wrestling and uh i uh i asked my parents my mom if i could be a wrestler and she just had like a heart attack like uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah Thing is that thing is like with a uh, like there's a joke with like immigrant like families when like they all they want their kids to do is like doctor lawyer uh, like engineer those are like the top three like professions that yeah. they want you to be in and then like when I said wrestling like it was like she had a heart attack <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Uh. 
You always got to surprise the parents a little bit every once in a while. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. And so it's just like, oh, when you're done school, whatever, like you can do whatever you want. And then I turn 18 and then she was like, no, you're not. You're not doing that. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It seemed like less of a fad at that point. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So and then. No, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say it. So from there, that would have uh, progressed your interest. You took up the uh, training then at that point. Uh, no. So like, I guess, uh, like as I, after I finished high school, I kind of like just stopped watching it. Like I kind of just turned into more of a casual viewer. Yeah. Like, I think the last big angle that I remember watching, uh, before I kind of like dropped off was like the whole invasion angle. Oh yeah. Remember that? Yeah. So yeah. kind of after that, I kind of stopped uh, watching and granted that like at that time I, I just turned like, like 19 so i was busy like partying like living that bar star <laughs> life and so i had like other priorities than watching like monday night raw if you know what i'm saying oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah no i was there too <laughs> yeah. and so you know then as i got older i just kind of stopped watching it uh like my other passion besides wrestling was music actually and so uh, like i was trying to pursue that like uh i was trying to be an audio engineer so that would be like mixing mixing and recording bands like there are there are audios yeah so like vocals and instruments and all, and all that stuff so uh like i moved to alberta to work on the rigs uh to save up a couple of money and i was going to go to vancouver and pursue music that was my that was like my uh like my goal and so i lived in edmonton for you know a couple of years and by that time i heard about lance storm school but I had no, I guess, interest in kind of like pursuing rest, like pursuing wrestling. Cause I was, I was happy doing music. So I was like, uh, if I, I was like, if I couldn't do wrestling and, uh, but I, but uh, no, if I wasn't doing wrestling, but I could do music, I would be, uh, I'm a happy camper, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, I, followed me, my passion for music uh, I, I called a bunch of studios in Edmonton asking hey I'm just looking to learn the business can you would you be willing to take on a free like intern essentially you don't uh, I'll come in work for free and one one company uh, I believe they were called Tough House Studios based out of Edmonton they uh, gave me a shot stuck with them for a good couple of years and what had happened was uh, over the Christmas break, the studio had gone robbed. And so we were out of business for a good couple of years. Because I guess the owner of the building didn't set the security alarm for the holidays. And so, yeah, so there was a, uh, hey, yeah, so we're kind of SOL. Yeah. And then so I mo uh, moved, moved back home. Uh, was back home, kind of tried to figure out like a new plan on on uh, where to go in life. Music was still an option, but I didn't. I just didn't expect uh, that to happen. So uh, I don't know. Yeah, it took me a good couple of years to kind of figure out where I wanted to go, uh, and then somehow I ended up in Vancouver, uh, going to school for music. Uh, I, I locked out, uh, you know, I had, a, I had a nice car, so I, that kind of paid for my education, sold that. And while I was out in Vancouver uh, pursuing music, uh, that's when I started getting back into watching wrestling, uh, I guess, because I had a lot of free time and, you know, I was living, I was living with my brother and he worked, you know, like all the time. And so I, I don't always be home by myself, like on Monday nights. So what better way to spend Monday night? <laughs> yeah, than watching Monday night raw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so at first I just started kind of, you know, casually watching it, like not really being invested. And maybe after a year of watching it, what really got me hooked back into, it, I guess, was like that, like that, uh, like that, that, I guess CM Punk, like pipe, uh, pipe bomb yeah granted this is like after like you know like i i didn't see the rise of john cena the rise of like dave batista like i knew who they were but like i just like you know i didn't see their rise to stardom so like i wasn't as as invested into say like these other guys 
uh, like everyone else is now or like you know like, do you get what i'm trying to say oh for sure yeah definitely man yeah and so when i saw that see a punk promo like oh man i thought this was like straight up so i'm like holy i'm like what is he saying and all this kind of stuff you know and then i remember running home after school to watch that show uh that was like after the raw on the score like um uh, like aftermath with uh renee young and uh jimmy cordes yeah yeah and so yeah i think after that that's when i really got hooked and then uh, fortunately while i was in vancouver my uh like mother passed away Oh, sorry. Sorry to hear that. No, it's okay, man. Yeah, it's it's like it's been quite some time, and like she she died pretty pretty young, at like fifty six, due to breast cancer, uh-huh. and so I was like, man, like you know, like life is really short, you know. Yeah. And so, like after uh, after I'd finished school, I came back to Saskatoon, um, you know, trying to kind of figure stuff out, and I was like man uh like left to be gone at, a, at an instant you know and you, you only get one shot at life and i was i was like i was getting pretty up there in age where i was like if i was gonna do wrestling you know like this would be like the time to do i think i was like 20 at this point i was like i think like 26 okay yeah so i was like man it's either like now or never so you know uh i went i ended up going to uh i think uh, WrestleMania when The Rock came back for yeah. his first match. Uh, was that 28, 27? It's got to be in there somewhere. <laughs> my, yeah. my memory's foggy yeah. at this point. I'm getting too old. <laughs> yeah, man, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, I, w- I went to uh, that, that WrestleMania and I was like, man, I was just like enthralled by everything. Like, you know, just like everything. And I was like, man, like, like I, I was like, I have to, that, that was, that was the nail on the coffin. Like I, I'm, I'm doing this. Yeah. And I sent an email to uh, Lance Storm's Wrestling Academy. And like he was like, oh, yeah, we got one spot left. So if you don't hurry up, uh, you'll miss the fall class. So like I, you know, sent him like uh, send the deposit, a picture. And that was that was uh, that, that was it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got a funny okay, quick, funny story about Lance. Uh, so I sent the money. And like I, uh, I flew into Calgary, and uh, he had a, I guess a rental house that he was, that he was renting out to students, mm-hmm. but he didn't give me the address for the house or the address for the school. So I remember flying into Calgary, and like I'm just like waiting in like I don't know the, the terminal. Like I have nowhere where to go. I'm like looking in the phone book for Storm Wrestling Academy. I couldn't <laughs> find it. Then all of a sudden, I see like this guy coming out, like coming out wearing nothing but like Under Armour, looking like he's modeling for a sports check magazine. And I just see this big jacked bald guy like walking towards me. I'm like, oh. And then he's like, and like I knew who he was, but like I don't know if he, like if he was there for me or just for like something else. Yeah. And I'm just like, like just like looking at him. And then he just approaches me. He's like, uh, filming. He's like, yep. Come on, come on with me. Go, oh, okay. And then, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so how was the experience uh, being at the Lance Storm Academy? What was it like there? Oh man, it was it was great, man. Actually, it was very like it was seeing like a like a professional wrestling ring like up close uh, was was like holy it's like holy man like this is like i've only seen this thing on like tv you know like on on raw nitro you know so i'm like just seeing that like up close you know like seeing like a fed ring right there it was oh it was just like i was like a little kid you know yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just, it's almost surreal when you actually get up that close for the first time ever and oh man yeah experience it so. oh yeah it was and yeah. uh like i remember that uh the first day of uh training was just nothing but like just cardio drills and yeah. he warned us you know like oh so tomorrow i got everybody uh have a light breakfast uh trust me so you know i'm like oh i think we'll be good you know and so like you know I, <laughs> and so oh and like maybe man like after like the first like first round man like i've honestly like felt like quit i think that was the only time i actually like felt like maybe i'm not 
cut out for this. Just like this, the the cardio man. And like he said, the the number one rule is whatever you do, don't puke in the ring. Yes. And like I think one person didn't make it out of the ring, and that was oh, uh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was yeah that was quite the lecture afterwards yeah but man no it was just like it was just uh like a fantasy camp like i don't know like i was just like uh like in a daze like it went by like it was like a three-month program yeah. from september to from september to december and honestly like looking back it went by so fast just like the blink of an eye you know like five days a week it was probably like yeah it was probably the one of like the funnest things of let's just that process like you know like looking back like you know like going to train for wrestling with like Lance Storm someone that you watched on TV like growing up you know like some somebody that I have like a childhood connection to you know and this this guy's like your teacher like your instructor your your friend your my landlord at the time because I was living at his house so <laughs> Like his rental house, so yeah, it was crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Land Storm fan myself, so I can understand yeah. how starstruck you'd have to be. So, oh yeah. Uh, but from uh, there, did you continue to uh, wrestle in Alberta after that, or were you right back to Saskatoon shortly after? Yeah. So after uh, the uh, training with Storm, I came back to uh, Saskatoon. Um, I had really like, no idea how to get bookings, but uh, there was a guy there that I was training with. He was already an experienced uh guy and a tremendous guy his name was a uh, kamikaze mm-hmm. i don't know if you ever uh seen him he's, he's done work for high impact wrestling so i don't know if you've ever I'd seen him didn't seen him cross work paths or. with him personally no yeah but no this guy is probably like the nicest guy i've ever met like in this business so far and like there's i don't think you'll hear a bad thing about him nice but he, he helped me get my first booking for uh gold dragon wrestling out in Wustra. yeah i'm familiar <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So, no, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, yeah, I was familiar. I think uh, I can't remember the dude's name that owned the company, but I, I spoke to him on many occasions myself too. Oh yeah, I think uh, guys, I think his name is Jan. Jan yes. Armstrong. Yeah, yeah, there it yeah, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, uh, I had my first match with them. Uh, my first opponent was a guy named Blake Broadway. Uh, the match is. Uh, Probably like every first first person's match, just the <laughs> drizzling uh, shits. Yeah, 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 a little yeah, rough yeah. around the edges. <laughs> oh yeah, I just wanted. I just like the, I asked like before out of my match. I asked. I emailed Lance. Hey, I'm having my first match on this day. Like any last any like quick advice? He's like, yeah, just get in and get out. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but so, uh, uh, oh, sorry, what? sorry. No, no, you go ahead. Sorry, I interrupted. No, no, I was going to tell just like, uh, like, an, just like after that, uh, there's a funny story kind of like after that event for Gold Dragon, we went to Out for Wings at this famous place in Moostra. I think they're called like Deja Vu or something. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so, and, uh, okay. So we go there, we order like our, our wings and whatnot. And I, like, uh, I asked for the bill and the guy's like, uh, Jan, the promoter, she's like, oh, it's just, uh, just don't worry about it for right now. I'm like, oh, okay. So then I, so then, okay, so I, like, I'm assuming it's paid for. So I leave. So I walk out, I leave. And then uh, I, where I leave. And then I think uh, maybe a couple hours later, uh, one of the boys like uh, messaged me on Facebook. He's like, hey, Phil, why did you, why did you do that? I'm like, what do you mean? Like the dine and dash. I'm like, what do you mean dine and dash? <laughs> At, uh, deja vu, uh, like your, your, your order. no. I was like, yo, I, I asked him, oh, no, I asked for the bill. I was going to pay. Jan said, hey, don't worry about it. Me being na- naive, I guess. So, oh, don't worry about it means I got it. <laughs> so uh, I walk up. I'm like, okay, I got to drive back home. I work in the morning. And so I leave and it's like, oh, no, Jan. Oh, Jan was hot. Like, yeah, you had to pay your bill. The boys were hot. Then I'm like, Oh, well, uh, well, I guess like, I never got booked afterwards for them. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you're back in Saskatoon. Uh, when, when did, uh, I guess HIW come up? Uh, HIW, I, uh, just messaged them. Uh, I believe at the, at the time I was talking to, uh, a person named, 
Charles Hayes, I believe. And then at the time uh, when I first joined HIW, uh, like they were going through changes. So, so Cash, King Cash, she was uh, coming into uh, ownership. So I sent them uh, an email talking to one person. And then when I came to the show, I was talking to a different person. But um, my first match with them, yeah, it was like in January. Uh, I was with Jeff Tyler. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, and, you know, it was, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it was. Probably, probably was what it was. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so long <laughs> back. But, yeah, like, uh, man, and, like their, that ring was like the first, I guess, indie ring i had because like you know when you when i went with lance's ring i thought all the rings were like were the same like kind of built the same so lance's ring it's like it's a feather ring so it's like it, it hurts but it, it's like it's fine you know and then when i went to uh gold dragon's ring their ring was uh it was all right it was it was fine and then when i went to uh hiw to their ring and like that first bump i was like oh i was like good god man i was like oh that's uh and like and then I think I was talking to somebody, somebody was asking me, so how'd you like that ring? And I'm like, oh, like, what do you mean? It's like, it's not like Lance's ring, is it? I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, so you spent some time in HIW, of course, uh, former HIW tag team champion as well, too. What was that experience like getting to be a part of a, a you know, what I would say a legendary tag team in this, uh, this area of Canada? Uh, it was great, man. Uh, I had a great run with Kid Chocolate. Uh, that was probably a, a, a real fun time in my career. And I think, you know, it kind of brought a little resurgence to like, to, to feel deadly. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, I, I enjoy, I can, I enjoy that time, like, uh, working with against like Los Rudos and then, uh, with Western Lions, uh, the three, the three, but, the three matches that we had, one at, uh, I believe, uh, Spring Meltdown, and then uh, at uh, Battle Arts, and then like the following month uh, at Wildside. So yeah, no, I had a. I wish it was a bit longer, but obviously there were some things going on in the company that kind of maybe stopped it, stopped it from uh, going further. But that was I had a I had a great time. Uh, doing the whole death by chocolate hope we cross paths and can do another run that would be great uh so as you were saying obviously a little bit of difficulties within hiw which inevitably led to the closing of hiw uh before the approach from prairie pro wrestling were uh, how aware were you that uh, there was going to be something else that come into saskatoon area um i did hear did hear about it uh about a, a potential another company coming in um when they reached out to me i believe it was for that uh i think uh for the first uh like food truck wars i think uh yeah. uh when i they contacted me about that um i was honestly happy uh that there would be another promotion in saskatoon I was, maybe I was worried about uh, how it would how it would work. I don't know if uh, if maybe I don't know there'd be some people might not want to work for somebody uh, for somebody else other than HIW out of loyalty. But you know, uh, I think Saskatoon. I think with the Prairie Pro Wrestling, we have a diverse like diverse product, diverse talent. A uh, good mix of like people that were with HIW and people that weren't with with HIW. So I I think I don't know, I think it's I think it's more it's a good mix of like the of like the old and like the new. I don't know if that makes sense. Like sure like with like like with the styles and stuff. Yeah, you bet. It's been a nice uh, nice blend. Get to see some new faces that weren't working with HIW. Work with some of the greats that were. So that. Uh, that clash has really excited the fans and I think drawn a really nice audience here in Saskatoon to the oh, yeah. Pro shows. Like, oh yeah. Like we have Prairie Pro Wrestling. Like uh, we have a tremendous fan base. Like you, you've been, like, you've been to the show. just like, yep. you know, and just, just to see it, you know, uh, 
like the the amount of love that we get you know it's uh it's it's unbelievable yeah yeah it truly is now speaking of prairie pro wrestling the prairie pro wrestling championship still has not been awarded to any anybody but you made it past the first round you're in the second round of the prairie pro wrestling championship tournament i am Obviously, we had a little bit of a setback with the COVID and yeah. stuff like that. But again, we are going to go forward. We're going to get to see Phil Deadly in round two. What's it going to take for Phil Deadly to go all the way in this championship tournament? Honestly, man, I got to Phil Deadly. What Phil Deadly has to do is pull out things that I have been wanting to show you guys about waiting for the right moment and i believe this me being close but yet so far from winning the, the uh, ppw championship this is a uh, what better time than to show everybody the boys in the back the locker room the office and you guys the fans to see what phil Dudley can actually bring to ppw Looking forward to that uh, going down. Hopefully we'll get to see that coming up very, very soon. Uh, anything else you want to tell? Any other wrestling-related stories that you got for everybody today? Oh, man. I, uh, so, where did it begin? Um, <laughs> I think, well, I think well, you talked to, uh, I, I think, at one of the, I think at the last battle art show, I think there was a, like, a HIW camp. Uh, like tryout, and I, I, uh, I briefly touched on it. How like I, some sometimes to, to make it, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta move, put yourself out there. And I told uh, the brief story about when I moved to Los Angeles to further my my training. Yeah. So when I did that, in 2016, I left because I felt at that time. I was stagnant and I wasn't, I wasn't uh, getting better in my ability to perform. And so I guess, and that also at that time, because of that, like, I don't know where I fit in, in the landscape of the Western Canadian pro wrestling scene. And so I figured, okay, I gotta somehow make a, a change. I gotta figure out something. I, uh, so uh, I contacted Lance. He said there was a wait list. I'm like, no, I'm not going to wait. And the year prior, I went to the uh, Harley Race Camp and uh, I talked to them about maybe coming down there to uh, to train, to live down, to live in the dojo. They had a room in the back. Was, uh, they had like a, a gym in the building. It was like every, They had everything. But it was like middle of nowhere missouri like some small town a couple hours away out of st louis i'm like ah, i don't know if i want to be stranded in the middle of nowhere and so uh, then uh i was talking to somebody and somebody said oh uh brian kendrick has a school in la go check them out so i sent them an email they're like yeah come on down um uh the only thing is you got to find your own place to stay. So I'm like, okay. So I get down to, I moved, I moved to LA uh, for like three months. Uh, the first day uh, of, of training, um, I was surprised at like how chill like he was. Uh, like he's very, uh, he's, He's almost like Lance. Like he's very, very calm, very patient. Um, yeah, uh, that that whole that time there. I think that's where, uh, like, I like with Lance. I I compared it to Lance taught me how to how to bake a cake. You know, like you get, you get your flour, your eggs, uh, what your sugar, whatever else you put in a cake. And then with uh, Brian Kendrick, I learned you know how to add you know like like the second top to a cake, how to add the frosting to the cake, uh, you know, like chocolate chips, just like the, the, the little extra sprinkle that makes, that makes the cake kind of like pop. If that makes good. If that, if that makes sense. Well, for sure. And that can be seen in your work with Prairie Pro Wrestling. I mean, you've definitely become one of the massive fan favorites amongst the uh, PPW Nation there at ringside. Oh, yeah. and, and it shows you've made a real true connection with the fans out there and they absolutely love you. And it shows in your work too. Well, thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And so 
I think that's just I uh, got that from there. Um, and uh, I guess wrestling stories there. Uh, I remember on the last day of class, uh, uh, Rob Van Dam just like just uh, just came in. Uh, well, like well, when I was there, like there was a, like a couple a couple guys came in. Uh, like Chris Hero would pop, uh, pop in one day casually uh, a couple of times. Uh, Katie Forbes popped in a couple of times. Uh, well, I don't know, like before, like uh, I think uh, before, like, like, I don't know, if it's bad to say before me too, Joy Ryan popped in, like, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like, um, and uh, like, and I remember uh, before the last day, uh, uh, he said to us, Brian, just a heads up, uh, Rob Van Dam will be, might be coming in tomorrow. Uh, if he does, don't mark out. Don't ask for a picture. Just go up to him, shake his hand. I say, okay. And so yeah, he came in the, the last day uh, with his training, like his uh, wife, his wife now, Katie Forbes. And, you know, we came in, we stood in line, shook his hand, shook his hand. And then guess what happened? So was that one guy in class, that one guy in class. Yeah. <laughs> ask. He asked, he asked, uh, he asked for a picture and, uh, it's surprising. like Rob, he didn't, he didn't, uh, he didn't blow up or anything. He just said, no. Nah. And then like, you know, and then, uh, Brian just saw like uh, this, like we all like just turned to Brian. We saw like his, like that, like that look, like that look in the eye where like, you know, your parents, when you're, when your parents say, you like, don't touch that, like, don't touch that. And then you touch it. And then they give you like that look. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, no, like he just came in one day and just kind of took over the class and like, uh, I don't know, he, he he was just telling us, you know, like tips about wrestling. I don't know, uh, I don't know just things things that would help you become a better performer. Um, yeah, uh, all right, man, that was, a, that was a long time ago. I'm just trying to remember. <laughs> <Time> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got a, yeah, man, not so much. Uh, oh, yeah, another one, yeah. So my first show in LA, I had it was for this promotion. I guess it's where Bailey used to train at. Okay. And so uh, I, uh, I go there, and I'm working this guy. His name was uh, Devin Danger. And I'm like, oh, man, I, like, I can't use Phil Deadly. Like, we, we can't have a Deadly and a Danger going against each other. It's <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to mess, mess things up. So I actually like debuted like a new character that I've wanted to kind of at least bring out once at a show. Uh, his name is Jerry Curl, and like uh, and so and I got this time on how like yeah like maybe three years experience. And so uh, I go, I go to the show. I give him a promo picture, and he's like, "Hey Phil, you're in the you're in the main event." And I'm like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, you're." Like I, I, at that point, like I shouldn't be in the main event. Like you know, like I, like I can be honest with myself. I shouldn't be in the main event. I shouldn't have been in that main event at that time. And so, uh, like me and this guy, whatever. He's like, this guy is normally normally a, I guess a heel, but he's uh, I guess he's a like, yeah, I'm gonna be a face. Just call it out there. I'm like, <gasps> and so <laughs> like I go I go out there, and like. Uh, we uh, we know, we danced a little bit. Then I go outside. I saw Jaw Jacking like with this guy in the crowd, and I get counted out. So I'm so like just talking trash like to this guy, trying to get heat that like that like I lose the match within the first ten seconds because I get counted out. And I and like and then once the once the ref rang the bell, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> and so like I'm looking back, and uh, the, the guys just give me like a look, like 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 what are you doing? And so, uh, like, we get back in the ring, and then, uh, luckily, like, uh, I guess, like, um, uh, the referee, not the referee, the, the GM of the show came out and just said, hey, we're not going to leave the fans like this. Please start the match. And the match was just trash. It was just, uh, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Things yeah. happen. It was, oh, man. oh, no, like, no, like, it was, like, I, I was, like, I was laughing at it. Like, looking back, like, I was just... Uh, I was just, yeah, it was just, it was just hilarious. Like it was just hilarity. It was just like, yeah, it was just everything that could go wrong, like went wrong. So it was yeah. just, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry, man. Yeah. Dude. No, no, it's all, yeah. Good. all good. Yeah. But if uh, I'll, I'll 
end with one last question anyway. If you had one opportunity to wrestle anybody that you've ever been a fan of, doesn't matter who it is, who would that uh, be? If I could wrestle any, any, I'm sorry, say that again? If you could wrestle anybody, anybody throughout history, if you could have a one-on-one matchup, who who's your dream match? Oh, Oh man, I don't. That's so <laughs> putting you on the spot. <laughs> no, no, I think it's uh, um, I'd say the uh, people, the uh, I guess, well, like to, to make it uh, for like the the people that have, I guess, helped uh, helped me in my career. I'd say, I'd say these guys. I'd say, uh, like. And like in an actual match, non-training match, uh, let's say a uh, Lance Storm, um, Brian Kendrick, um, this guy. Uh, some people might know him; uh, they might not. When I was in Mexico uh, last year, I was training with this guy named Chessman. Okay. Yeah, he, uh, he he works for AAA predominantly. Uh, he trained Taya Valkyrie when she came to Mexico. Um, that the uh, chessman and uh Conan actually, uh, Conan helped me uh get, get settled, settled into Mexico. Um, actually, I, I if you don't mind, can I tell that story real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I need to, I need to yeah. the last no, it's all good. He said he said one question. Oh, no, um, no, we got time, we got time, we got time. Okay, man, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, me going to Mexico, uh. How that came about, I actually don't know. I just was like, I need, a, I want to go somewhere and wrestle. That's like, not can that's not Canada. <laughs> and so uh, I picked Mexico, but I kind of didn't know like where to go in Mexico. Like, like I knew of C- CMLL, uh, like, and uh, I knew AAA, but like, I don't know, like how to how to get a hold of, of who like, who to talk to, and like the language barrier and all that stuff. Yeah. And so uh, CWE actually, they were hosting like a Conan, uh, Conan like seminar trial from Mexico. And at this point, I was really planning to go to Mexico. So I kind of, maybe it's the wrong attitude to have going in, but I didn't care about uh, securing like a tryout swap because I was already going regardless. Like it's, it was already just, you know, like uh, it was already done deal. I'm also went just to kind of maybe ask some questions about where to go and like, you know, all that stuff. And so, uh, you know, like I go, I go to the tryouts, uh, do my thing, and then I get lucky enough to end up uh, driving Conan back to, you know, like his hotel. Uh, we stop, we stop for some chicken, talk, uh, talk chicken, and talk, uh, talk the business. He, uh, you know, he put me on some on some game, and we, you know, he like he gave me his contact info, and he's like, yeah, when you get to Mexico, just uh, give me, shoot me an email or text and I'll tell you where to go. So, Oh, great, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So a couple months pass, uh, I get to Mexico and funny thing is, okay, you know how we're so accustomed to like, you know, I guess here, like everything being like English. Yeah. So much of, I guess maybe of a idiot I was. So I went to, I got to, I got to Mexico city. I got to the airport. So obviously I'm a call an Uber. So, I uh, get on the I uh, get on the, the airport Wi-Fi, and then I get onto Uber, and everything is in Spanish. Oh, no. <laughs> and so I'm like, so I'm like, uh, I'm like uh, some guy like offers to pick me up. He's talking to me in Spanish, and I'm like, uh, and like I go to Google to try and use translate, but even Google is in Spanish. Yeah. So I'm just like freaking out, like how do I like how do I get how to how to like leave this airport? It took me about maybe oof, but like an hour, two hours to kind of get like uh try to figure out uh, how to turn uh Spanish Uber into English Uber. But uh what to call it? Uh so yeah, I I get I get picked up from the airport, uh I get dropped off of my hostel. I text Conan, hey, I'm in Mexico. Uh like where like where do i go and he's like oh okay just uh call this guy named uh airy strange um if you guys i don't uh he, i know he does a lot of work with gcw and mlw it's phenomenal super innovative with his stuff 
uh, he says, contact him. I'm like, okay. So I contact this Aries guy. Uh, and I'm like, hey, man, Conan told me to uh, talk to you about just kind of following you around to come train. And granted, like, uh, you know, kudos to him. Uh, like, he couldn't, his English was like, wasn't that great. So, like, oh man, like, uh, I was like, man, thank you for like trying to help me out for, even though I can't speak uh, any, like, a lick of Spanish, which I sh- honestly, I should have tried and learned before I went, but I just figured that, oh, like, oh, I'll figure it out. Like, it's, it's all good, you know, yeah. but, and so, uh, so yeah, I came meet me at this, uh, at, like, this address, whatever. So I take a cab ride uh to like this place and uh like i don't know like who this aries guys is like i googled him but like a couple guys came up so i'm like i don't know so i'm just waiting outside like this dojo i'm just like it's each guy that comes into the into the building i'm like aries 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 and they're like no 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 so i'm like oh then i'm like so i go i go i go and i go into the dojo and i'm just like just uh like clueless as can be like I, I can't speak spanish i'm like i don't know where i am i'm waiting for this guy who i kind of don't know what he looks like so i'm like well i guess i'm gonna just hop into this class and just uh i don't know do whatever i'm gonna do and so uh so I'm like we're, we're we're doing some warm-ups some lucha drills some lucha like flips and all that kind of stuff and then i'm, I'm not like a, like a flippy person so it was like my first time like doing like any sort of like like flip at all like that, that involves me landing on my feet <laughs> so i go do like this flip and then just as i as, was as about to go do this flip uh aries comes out of nowhere says hey uh no stop and then he's like you f- you uh, like me yeah me yeah come come so i, I so like i leave the i leave the doors when i guess I, like i was supposed to go to a facility where this chess man guy is uh training and i guess that's the opposite side of the city and i'm like yo but you told me to come here and then he's like uh what you call it uh he's like oh no no essay i'm sorry 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 uh wrong text wrong text and then he's like no no tomorrow tomorrow you me i take you to uh to uh what do you say uh uh uh, I think yeah, and he said, "No, oh, tomorrow I'll take you to uh, damn. Mm. Anyways, I forgot what he said, but <laughs> anyways, yeah, uh, anyways, he he ended up taking me to Chessman where I where I started training with in Mexico, and uh, and then I pretty much just kind of stuck with this Chessman guy the entire time I was there. Unfortunately, like for my second day of training, I I sprained my LCL, so. I couldn't really actually wrestle in Mexico. Like I had like one match, uh, like a three on three match. Uh, I mean, like a six man tag, but I couldn't uh, really do much just because of my injured leg. So, um, yeah, that's kind of my story in Mexico. Uh, it, obviously, it got cut short too because of COVID. You know, um, came back home thinking that just like everyone else, oh, it, it'd be over within a couple months, you know, and then I guess not, but uh, yeah. We are 19 months later. <laughs> yeah, 19 months yeah. later, yeah. yeah. And so like, I, I do plan on going, I think my my current goal um, within the, within for 2022, aside from winning the PPW championship, <laughs> is, going, is uh, taking that title to uh, Mexico when I go back, yeah. Well, that would be great to have the PPW championship held up in Mexico somewhere. Oh, love it. I love the sounds of that. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. So any, so any questions? Like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I've been going off on tangents and here and there. So no, this is, like is my first perfect. Interview. You got great yeah. stories to tell, like fill in the time. I love it. Absolutely love yeah. it. So no, uh, uh, outside of wrestling though, uh, you, you mentioned about your love for music and getting into that yeah. and you took schooling for it. Uh, is there ever any aspiration once the wrestling comes down, uh, winds down a little bit, uh, get back involved with the music side? Um, well, like when I, I stopped the music because I think like, uh, I was doing it for about five, six years. And this one day, honestly, like, 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 uh, the fire just went out. 
and like I tried forcing it. I just had no desire to uh, touch anything like music related. I kind of just packed all my gear up, tossed it in the closet. Because music is one of those things, man. It's like, you know, like, like sometimes I remember it would take me maybe like, I would spend like eight hours just trying to mix like this one drum just to get like the right sound. And like, it's just, it was just so time consuming. I think that kind of burnt, burnt me out of, burnt, that burnt me out from it. But like, I'd say in the past year, two years, like the, the urge has been coming back a little bit, like to, to try to maybe dabble a little bit in it. Like I sub, I sub all my equipment, you know, all my mixing boards, my speakers, my little toys and stuff. Yeah. Um, so I think I will, I think I will uh, get back into it. Not necessarily after wrestling, but uh, maybe turn it into a hobby as opposed to make it as a career into a career aspiration. For sure. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's really kind of all the questions I have. I mean, you really filled the time perfectly telling great stories. Like this has just been absolutely awesome. So glad that we got to do this uh, before we do wind up though. Is there anywhere on social media, anything like that you want to plug right now where everybody can find you? Yeah, man. Uh I'd say uh, on my Instagram, uh, Phil Deadly. So all one word. Uh, Twitter is Phil Deadly as well. Um, I have a Facebook, Phil Deadly, but I don't really use it. So you're better off just to maybe get at me on uh, the Twitter or uh, uh, Instagram. Perfect. That's wonderful. Well, I want to thank you once again for being on the show today. It has been an absolute blast. Looking forward to seeing you again at the next Prairie Pro Wrestling show and hopefully watching you uh, rise to the top. Uh, hopefully grab that championship and be able to take it down to Mexico with you on your next trip. Uh, so thank you again, Phil, for being on the show. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank Great you, Bobby. Time. Maybe maybe next time we can have uh, Papa Smokes on. We can do it. We can do a three way. That's yeah. right. I'm sure he'd have a ton of questions for you. So thank yeah. you for joining. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, Bobby. Yeah. yeah.